hundred days ago, this rainforest was just a pile of dirt and rocks. But I'm going to bring it to life with rain, predators and fire. Empires will rise and they will fall. But the real question is, who can survive? On day one, the tank was basically a graveyard. Just some stone, bark and dead wood. I laid down a base of volcanic rock, added my own mix of soil and leaves, and then started planting. A fern, a bromeliad, some vines, and even an orchid. It may look barren now, but where there is death, there is life. Day three, it was time to introduce the first animals. Meet the leafcutter ants. I added them in and they got to work right away, creating highways across the moss and building a massive underground city. They didn't just eat the leaves, they used them to grow a special fungus that fed their entire colony. Inside their chambers, the queen was already laying her first batch of eggs, destined to become the next generation of workers. They were taking over. This was their forest now. By day seven, the peace wasn't going to last. A white mold started spreading everywhere, fast. If I didn't do something, it would destroy the entire tank. I needed to bring in a cleanup crew, meet the springtails and isopods. After adding them in, they got to work eating the mold. And pretty soon, the outbreak was under control. The isopods were even shedding their skins and devouring the old pieces, leaving nothing to waste. A few days later, a ghost appeared. A single mushroom pushed through the soil. It rose and fell in less than a day. But in its death, it fed the forest. The cycle had begun. By day 15, it was time to introduce some new animals. Here's a rainforest snail. It moved slowly but relentlessly, leaving a glistening trail. And meet the stick insect. This guy is a master of camouflage. He might look like a twig, but he's one of the strangest creatures in this tank. He even shed an empty copy of himself, a ghostly shell, leaving you to wonder which one was real. But something else was watching. Something with eight eyes. Meet the jumping spider. She was a hunter and she had her sights set on the ant highways. One wrong step and it's over. She built a tiny silk retreat, waiting for the perfect moment. By day 20, the tank was no longer a tank. It was a forest. The plants were growing, moisture was rising and falling, and tiny worlds were forming inside the cups of the plants. The ants were not safe. The jumping spider waited for a worker to step out of line. She sprang, a blur of motion, but just as she was about to strike, an army of ant soldiers swarmed up the trunk and scared her off. She got away, but the ants had won this time, their numbers protecting them. On day 25, new life emerged in the bromeliad cups. Hundreds of tiny mosquito larvae were hatching, wriggling in the water like a cloud. They seemed harmless but their numbers were exploding. Soon they would be everywhere. I needed to act fast. On day 30, I introduced a tiny unseen predator, the phantom midge larva. These transparent hunters glide through the water, invisible until they strike. They began to thin out the mosquito population, restoring balance to the miniature pond. On day 35, the ants had a new problem. It was time to introduce a new top predator. Meet the praying mantis, an absolute assassin. It would wait for hours without moving and then strike. One by one, the smaller insects began to disappear. I watched as it meticulously cleaned its forelegs, preparing for its next victim. The balance of power was shifting. The jumping spider was a deadly hunter, but it turned out there was something even bigger in the shadows. Meet the whip spider, 
This thing is pure nightmare fuel. It's nearly blind, feels its way through the dark with razor-sharp limbs, and hunts other predators. I saw it flatten itself against the bark, becoming almost invisible, a true master of the hunt. By day 50, the forest was getting crowded, but there was another monster hiding in the deep shade. Meet the centipede. It's fast, flexible, and almost as terrifying as my mother-in-law. After I added it in, it vanished under a log, waiting for night to fall. Its long, segmented body was built for navigating the dense undergrowth. I decided to add one more killer into the mix. On day 60, I introduced the assassin bug. This thing is silent, venomous, and doesn't even need to chase its prey. It just waits. One touch from its venomous mouth, and its victim is paralyzed. It would patiently sit on a leaf, its proboscis ready, blending perfectly with its surroundings. By day 70, the forest was a war zone. The ant empire was thriving, their underground bakery constantly churning out food for the growing larvae. But predators were hiding on every leaf and under every rock. Every layer of the tank was alive. The centipede had already claimed a territory, leaving behind the husks of its prey. But soon the humidity began to fall and the canopy thinned. The air changed. The ants sensed it and began to seal the entrances to their nest, reinforcing their walls with wet soil. Something big was coming. On day 80, the dry season had arrived. I carefully removed every last animal from the tank, but not for the reason you might think. It was time to reset the ecosystem. I started a wildfire. The blaze spread quickly. Smoke filled the tank, blurring the lines of the glass. Everything began to burn until every last plant was gone. The tank was just a barren wasteland again. The forest had fallen silent. Or so I thought. By day 90, from the ashes, new life began to sprout. A single fern unfurled through the blackened soil, a vibrant green against the charred landscape. The cycle was starting all over again. The moss returned, spreading like a green carpet, and the plants grew back stronger, their roots reaching deeper. The forest began to breathe again. On day 95, the ecosystem was rapidly recovering. I saw new springtails popping in the recovering soil, and the isopods were actively tunneling, aerating the earth. New, tiny fungi were already emerging, breaking down the burnt debris. Even a new batch of mosquito larvae had hatched in the refilled bromeliad cups. The forest was almost back to its full, dangerous glory. Day 100, after a hundred days of fire, invasion, growth, and collapse, the rainforest was not just surviving, it was thriving. Life always finds a way to return, stronger than before. I made another ecosystem just like this one. Be sure to check it out and I'll see you in the next one.